<laughs> oh man man oh man today is gonna be a fun day indeed ladies and gentlemen it's your boy Ed from Taxaurus. Welcome to another build video. Today I'm going to be building the most powerful PC I have ever built in my life. We're going to feature none other than the AMD Threadripper 3990X. Oh man, just saying that is already making me sweat. This over here is a 64 core, 128 thread processor with a boost clock of 4.3 gigahertz. Let's just say threads aren't the only thing that's going to rip. It supports quad channel memory and 88 total PCI lanes, which is the most bandwidth and IO you can get on any desktop processor currently. An absolute workhorse this CPU is. It is going to obliterate my render times into oblivion. <laughs> and uh, I can just imagine how much it's going to improve my overall workflow. In fact, I'm gonna test that out at the end of this video once the PC is built. I'm gonna compare the render times of this system to the render times of my PC back at home that I use to currently edit videos. So just out of curiosity and for fun, I wanna see how big the gap is in render times between these two systems. Of course, we gotta pair the CPU with a worthy companion, hence why I'm going with the new RTX 3090 Gaming X Trio from MSI. Any other GPU would pale in comparison. The Gaming X Trio is equipped with MSI's new TriFrozer 2 thermal system, which has been designed with efficiency to give you a nice balance of cooling and silence. Also, their new Torx Fan 4.0 is built with an outer ring design that focuses airflow into the cooling system while offering more static pressure compared to their last generation cards. All MSI RTX 30 series cards will also feature new graphene backplates. This new material is four times stronger than a plastic backplate while offering 20 times more efficient heat dissipation as MSI claims. We're gonna see just how beast of a card this is compared to last generation flagship cards as well as the RTX 3080 in the benchmark segment of this video. So in order to take advantage of the CPU's features and the overclocking capabilities, I had to pair it with the best in slot motherboard for the TRX40 chipset. And in my opinion, it is none other than the ASUS ROG Zenith 2 Extreme Alpha. Packed with all the bells and whistles you could ever dream of, this is the type of board you want to request from Santa Claus on Christmas. We got a 16 power stage design with active cooling VRM heatsinks, 8 DIMM slots with quad channel support up to 4733 MHz. We also got 4 reinforced PCI Gen 4 slots and so many USB ports, you wouldn't know which hole to occupy first. So in order to get the best possible performance, we have to use specific RAM. There's actually a lot of people out there, sadly, that don't know what memory is best for their Ryzen system. A lot of people just look at the frequency and the pretty little colors before adding it to their cart. Well, that's not exactly the best way to choose the right memory for your Ryzen system. If you're a beginner watching this video on a Ryzen system that you recently built, then there's a small chance that you're not really taking advantage of your system's full potential. Not to make things confusing or complicated for you guys, but there are different types of die out there for memory. Some dies offer more reliable overclocks and stability for Ryzen systems, while others do not. This is why I'm using Crucial Ballistic Max Memory for this build, because not only is it Ryzen compatible out of the box, but it's also using Micron Prime die. Crucial does things to optimize their products beyond binning, such as DRAM array timings, tuned for stability at low latency, and on-die voltage regulating that's optimized for XMP. If you're new to building PCs and not sure what RAM to go with, you can always use the Crucial System Scanner on their website. Once you launch the program, it will scan your system and provide you with a list of compatible upgrades. Just know if you're going with Crucial Memory, it is compatible with Ryzen right out of the box. So for this build, we're going with two 32 gigabyte kits, so a total of 64 gigs of RAM running at 4400 megahertz. Hot damn, let's go. Now obviously I'm gonna need storage solutions to keep up with these insane speeds. So for the first time ever on a build, we're actually going with more than one storage device. We're gonna be throwing in two two terabyte M.2 SSDs, which I'll be combining in RAID 0 configuration. So we're gonna have essentially a single four terabyte M.2 SSD, as well as a two terabyte SSD for uh, mass storage. I wish the P5s were PCI Gen 4 compatible since we are using a TRX40 chipset. You know, it would have been nice to take advantage of PCI Gen 4 speeds, but it is not the end of the world. These will do just fine. For cooling, we are going with the new Cooler Master ML360P Silver Edition temporarily until I can do a full custom loop for the 3990X. 
I'm actually gonna be using the benchmarks in this video as a baseline to compare to the water cool PC once it's done, because we're gonna be comparing things like uh, temperatures, overclocking headroom, and of course, performance. So essentially, this is gonna be a two-part video. So I decided to spice things up a bit and not go with individual fans this time around. So instead, I'll be using this Master Fan SF360R cooling matrix. One of the things I like about the Master Fan is the convenience it offers. It basically replaces three 120mm fans and also it's going to help with cable clutter because we have only one cable coming out of this entire unit instead of having to plug in three separate fans. So that's going to be cool. Powering the system is the V1000 from Cooler Master. This is a 1000 watt platinum certified fully modular power supply. But of course, you guys know how we do it here. On the channel, we're gonna go with custom cables from Cable Mod. This is actually a color scheme I've never used before on the channel. I decided to change things up again and go with black and silver for the first time ever. Uh, it makes sense because we are using a silver edition of the AIO, so it's gonna match that and it's gonna match some parts of the case as well. Technically, you know, this portion over here is gray, but it looks very similar to silver, so it's gonna add a bit of consistency to the overall build. But uh, speaking of the case, this is what we're going to be using to build inside. The Cooler Master H500P. It wasn't hard picking a case that not only looks great, but has really great airflow. After all, we're going to need all that we can get to cool this bad boy of a CPU. The entire build comes out to a little over $9,000, which isn't that much if you consider selling one of your kidneys for $136,000. You only need one anyways. But yeah, that's pretty much all the parts we'll be using in the build. I'm super excited to put this all together. So let's go ahead and put the black borders on the screen with a little bit of dramatic color grading, cue the music and begin the montage. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the ultimate RTX 3090 system, the most powerful system I have built to date. Oh man, I'm actually getting kind of nervous just standing next to it. Aesthetically, I think it turned out amazing with the black and silver color scheme I was going for, but I did run into one minor issue and that was with the cables. As you guys can see, some of the cable combs are black and even the color pattern is off compared to the 24 pin. And that's because some of the cables arrived defective. 
one of the 8-pin PCI cables as well as both of the 8-pin EPC cables for the CPU arrived effective and I was forced to go on Amazon and rush order some extensions and luckily I was able to find some that was also black and silver but they don't have the uh, silver cable comb like you see on the 24-pin but you know it worked out in the end. Aside from that one minor hiccup, everything else went smoothly. I also had to peel off the sticker on both of my Crucial SSDs so it blends in a lot better with the color scheme and even replaced the stock thumb screws with silver ones that I picked up from Cable Mod. You know, it's these small little details that really make a difference on how your PC looks in the end. So I always try and build a system that I would be proud of taking home myself. I decided to throw the radiator in the front of the case for a push and pull configuration that way the CPU is getting as much cool air as possible while we have the other four fans exhausting the hot air out. There's a lot of air getting pulled in the system as you can see here which is good because we can use all the cooling we can get to tame this bad boy of a CPU. I didn't really understand the power of the processor until I ran the Cinebench R20 benchmark for the first time and I was blown away by how fast it rendered out the project. It literally took less than 10 seconds to complete the render with an insane score of 23,627. This got me excited to check out real world use of the processor. So I rendered out a 15 minute 4K file on Vegas Pro on the system that I'm using at home, which is currently the Frosty PC, and that's using the i9-10900K, by the way. So it finished the render in just under 24 minutes. Now I ran the same exact render on this PC, and it completed the task in eight minutes and 53 seconds, almost three times faster. In terms of temps, the 3990X idles around 42.5 degrees Celsius while peaking at 54.C. Fairly cool temps, however during full load we can see the CPU reaching upwards of 79.4 degrees Celsius which is the highest it peaked during the full render time. Still, 80 degrees C on a 64 core CPU is really good considering we are only using a 360 millimeter radiator and not a custom water block. This is going to be a great baseline to compare it against when I do eventually toss the 3990X underwater. So make sure you guys subscribe if you want to see part 2 of this video. The GPU is also doing fairly good for temps, peaking at 80 degrees Celsius during the Heaven benchmark. It's about 13 degrees warmer than the ASUS RTX 3080 that I used in the last build, but it is to be expected considering how much more powerful this card is. In terms of noise, it's not the most quietest system I have built, that's for sure. I mean, after all, we are using a case with a mesh front panel and great airflow in combination with super high-end components. And finally, the GPU benchmarks, which I'm sure is why half of you are here in the first place. How did the RTX 3090 do against the RTX 3080 as well as the last generation cards? Let's take a look. Kicking off with the Time Spy benchmark, which is a great DX12 benchmark to use against cards, we can see the RTX 3090 right at the top with only a 3% lead compared to the 3080 and 1080p. However, that lead becomes more promising in higher resolutions. The 3090 is about 12% faster in 1440p and 13% faster in 4K resolution. By the way, keep in mind that the RTX 3090 starts at $1499, which is more than double the cost of the 3080. Next up, we have the Heaven Benchmark. Similar results are found here with the 3090 being only 6% faster than the 3080 and 1080p. Once again, the biggest performance gains are seen in the higher resolutions with a 12% performance jump in 1440p and 17% in 4K. Moving on to GTA 5, we can see some CPU bottlenecking across most of the cards in 1080p and even some in 1440. However, the cap is lifted in 4K resolution, giving the 3090 a 13% boost in performance over the 3080 and a 27% compared to the 2080 Ti. We can see similar numbers on Rainbow Six Siege with both of the 30 series cards experiencing some bottlenecking on both 1080p and 1440p gaming. But we don't see much of a gain even in 4K resolution with the 3090 beating out the 3080 by just 10% and 21% against the 2080 Ti. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands is a very demanding title as we can see underwhelming results across all the cards, not even hitting 144 FPS in ultra settings. The 3090 being about 12% faster than the 2080 Ti in 1440p and 29% faster in 4K. 
Much of the same story we have been seeing can be said about the division, with marginal gains between the 3090 and 3080 across all the resolutions, and nearly triple those gains coming from the 2080 Ti. Moving on to Red Dead 2, we can see some CPU capping yet again on the 30 series cards in 1080 and 1440p, similar to GTA 5. However, the cap was lifted in 4K resolution with the 3090 being 10% faster over the 3080 and an insane 52% faster over the 2080 Ti. And finally, let's take a look at some ray tracing performance. We can see some significant gains with DLSS on. The 3090 saw as much as double the FPS with DLSS on in 4K resolution. I got a feeling that this card is going to really shine in ray tracing titles with DLSS on. Looking at the total frames across all the cards, we can see that the RTX 3090 is in the lead, but not by that much compared to the 3080. We're only looking at a 4% performance difference in 1080p, 6% in 1440, and 12% in 4K. Comparing the results with the 2080 Ti, we can see more than double the performance gains compared to the 3080, with the 3090 being 14% faster in 1080p, 30% faster in 1440, and 31% faster in 4K resolution. And just for fun, let's see the performance gain coming from the 2080. So the RTX 3090 is 24% faster in 1080p, 34% faster in 1440, and a whopping 48% faster in 4K resolution. Damn, those are some hefty numbers. I'm gonna say the same thing that I said in the 3080 build video. The 3090 is much like the 3080. It is not a 1080p focused gaming card. So if you're buying it just for 1080p gaming, you're not gonna get the most value out of it. Taking a look at the performance per dollar, we can see that the RTX 3080 still has the best value. It is Nvidia's flagship gaming GPU after all. There is no surprise that the 3090, although being the most powerful card on the list, doesn't offer any bang for the buck. The 2080 Ti is being sold for $600 where I live, and even that is a better value compared to the RTX 3090. You know, I wasn't really surprised with the benchmarks of the 3090. I knew it was gonna be the fastest GPU in the market. It cost literally more than double the price of the 3080, but only offers a 10% performance gain. But you know what, that's not gonna stop PC enthusiasts from buying it because it is still the fastest GPU in the market. It's not gonna stop me from putting two of these bad boys in big red version four, let's, just, let's be clear. There's always gonna be a market for these GPUs, regardless of the price. I bet you Nvidia can charge $2,000 for these cards and people will still go out there and buy them. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Um, the RTX 3090 was never meant to be a value GPU, right? It's targeted for people out there, a small group of people, I should say, that just want the best in their system. It's, it's simple as that. For everyone else out there who wants the most value or the most bang for the buck, currently the RTX 3080 is the king in that regard, but we still have cards coming, you guys. My advice still remains the same. Hold off on your purchases. Do not get hyped by watching all these YouTube videos or these reviews. We still got the 3070 coming as well as AMD's new GPUs. So please wait until everything has been released. That way you kind of have a nice selection to choose from before, you know, buying something that you end up regretting. Unless these cards can provide food and water and a nice back rub, I would say hold off. Okay, it is not a need. It's more of a want in this situation. But anyways, that's pretty much it for the video. Uh, if you guys enjoyed it, make sure to toss a like before you head out. I'll also drop a link to all the parts I used down below. Consider subscribing because I do have some awesome builds coming up very soon. I love your beautiful faces and I'll see you very soon in the next one.